Hi, I'm the Beauty Professor, and you can find my beauty blog at www.beautyprofessor.net. Today, I'm excited to share a quick review of the NARS Radiant Cream Compact Foundation. And it's a product that I have been experimenting with for perhaps almost the last month at this point. So I feel like I've had enough experience with it to officially weigh in. So being the foundation fanatic that I am, I was definitely intrigued when I heard that NARS was going to be releasing a cream-based foundation appropriate for a compact. And so I paid attention to shipments at my local Sephora until, lo and behold, they happened to receive it. I don't even think it was out on the shelves yet, but they did have some in the drawers and they were kind enough to put aside the shade that I typically wear in NARS, which is Fiji. So to give you the best sense of this foundation, I made sure to apply it on my face this morning, and that was about seven hours ago. And I have not set it with powder, touched it up with powder, or really touched it up in That was my goal, to give you the best sense of how this foundation looks and then wears throughout the day on what I might add is a very warm and humid day here in Southern California. So allow me to get close to the camera so that you can see the finish unfettered by powder or touch-ups. I'll go ahead and speak to the finish of the foundation, the texture and scent, the wear time, and then I'll close with my overall impression. First, the finish. So as the name implies, radiant in the title, this does have a radiant finish, at least in my experience. And as the day goes on, the finish becomes increasingly radiant. That is either a great thing or perhaps a major deterrent, depending on the finish that you personally prefer when it comes to foundations. I've been experimenting with dewier, more radiant foundation finishes lately, so I'm finding that it's something that I can work with, but as the day goes on, I feel compelled to touch up said radiance with some form of powder or blotting or maybe both because there is such a fine line between radiant and, gosh, sweaty or even oily looking. And neither of those options are good ones. Another word on its finish, I have heard and read differing reports on how radiant it is on people's faces. For me, living in what's a very humid area right now, radiance is definitely present. I cannot speak to what it might feel like if I was living in a very dry climate. I've read that some people feel this foundation as a cream texture highlights dry patches or dryness. That has definitely not been an issue for me, but it could serve to be one, I don't know, when the weather changes ultimately. As better. the name implies, the texture of this foundation is incredibly creamy. Get a better sense of the texture, allow me to show you what's going on inside this compact. The compact and the foundation are sold separately and the compact is $10, definitely worth it. I've heard of people forgoing the compact and just using the foundation for their purposes and if you're not interested in a mirror and a very streamlined case, then I suppose you could do that, but I think the compact is a worthy investment. Inside you have a space for the sponge which comes with it and that has an aerated bottom so that the sponge has a chance to dry between usage and then the compact of the foundation itself which just snaps into place and this is Fiji. Uh, just note and this is completely labeled on the compact on the foundation case you will want to seal it completely like that because if it's not completely closed, that'll allow air to get into the foundation formula, which ultimately will lead to it drying out and degrading. That was a slight detour. Back to texture. It's very creamy. You can see it here, it just lifts right onto the finger. It's not a dry cream, it's a very emollient cream. And let me swatch it on my wrist to show you what I'm talking about. Here it is on my wrist. Fiji is an absolutely perfect color match for me right now. And my skin is about NC25 or so, and Fiji is just a seamless match for Even me. Here you can see the lights catching it. It has a radiant, creamy finish. It doesn't dry down to a powder. 
it stays radiant. And I have found from a textural perspective, the best way to apply this is with a dampened beauty blender. The sponge that comes with it, I have tried for touch-ups and I'll get to how effective those are momentarily. But in terms of getting a seamless, balanced kind of canvas, the damp beauty blender works best for me with this formula. It does not ever fully dry down, at least for me. Now, if I use a light setting powder, that's commensurate to a dry down for me. But if I don't use a setting powder, then I do feel rather hydrated and glowy for most of the day. And that would be the situation you see going on right here. On to the lasting power. I put this on about seven hours ago in the method that I just described. And I did not set it with powder and you can see that it is still on my face. I haven't found from a longevity perspective that it pulls into my pores or slides around, but I would not call this a non-transferable foundation. It can transfer. If I rubbed my face too hard or scratched, I might collect some makeup on my hand and that's unpleasant. So I do my best and just not touch my face throughout the day anyway, but I would feel like uh, that's a potential with this particular very creamy and emollient formula. If I were headed out for the day, a long day of teaching into the night, which I will be facing later on this week, this is likely not the foundation I would choose to be my companion because it's a little unpredictable in terms of lasting power. On some days that I've tried it, I get a good six to eight hours without even a need for touch up and that might have to do with what the weather is like that day. On other days I've tried it in three or four hours, I'm feeling like I need to do a blotting session and then touch it up with powder because it's just too radiant, it's crossed that line. So to encapsulate my thoughts on this foundation, the dubious elements regarding this foundation would be that it's not particularly long lasting, that it does behave differently on different skin. So while I get a very radiant finish, other people have reported getting a rather dry and patchy one. And also, it can cross the line into too glowy or too radiant after a few hours of wear. The strong points would be that it is, upon initial application, a very beautiful skin-like finish. It does tend to run radiant on me, which is nice if you're going for something glowy. And that the wear time does have the potential to be longer, especially when set with powder. So it creates a lovely canvas very quickly and one that would last for a while if you took the proper precautions. Oh, and finally, it is very friendly, at least in my experience, to sensitive skin. No clogged pores, no irritation, and no added fragrance, which is definitely a bonus. All in all, I would recommend this foundation to somebody who's looking for an ultra radiant finish, who isn't particularly concerned about lasting time, and who is perhaps interested in a cream product that is incredibly compact, especially when you purchase the optional compact. A quick mention, unrelated to this product, but certainly related to my blog. If you are a Southern California local, I am going to be hosting my very first beauty professor event at Neiman Marcus in Fashion Island in Newport Beach. I will be posting all the details on my blog, but as a preemptive effort, if you're around in the afternoon on September the 18th, I invite you to put it on the calendar and I can tell you now it's beauty related and it should be a really fun couple hours of the day. Once again, I'll probably post another video discussing all of the details, but certainly I'll be disseminating those details on my blog in the next few days, but thought I would throw it out there right this moment. I hope you enjoyed this quick review of this NARS foundation and I welcome your questions and your comments. As always, please don't forget to visit me at my beauty blog, Beauty Professor, which can be found at www.beautyprofessor.net. Take care.